What is up, everybody? It is Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations, 2020 Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers. It's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And being part of that uh, project or show, reached out directly and indirectly to over 100,000 fathers around the world in 2022 and 2021. And we're just calculating 2023 numbers, but it looks like it's going to happen last year also. As always, I like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, and a solution for someone's problem. Broadcasting live, I guess it's January 13th, half, almost halfway through the month of January. But like Toronto, where I am, and most of North America... We're in a deep freeze. And I was thinking today, uh, sometimes weather can be havoc in this part of the world, and it can sometimes cause havoc with Aisha Case Taggers. But Aisha Case Taggers is here. Lala Key is here. What's going on, ladies? We had a 63-day today. You what? We had a 63-day today. 63 degrees? That was a high. That was a high. It's now, like, down to, like, 40 eight or so but yeah it was 63 today after like freezing all week and um we had what six inches of snow and then wow. the next day it was like 52 all we, gone we had like all two gone. or three we had two or three inches of snow last night then around 11 o'clock last night it began to rain and then heavy rain this morning I said, okay, let me get outside and shovel my driveway before the temperature drops because I don't want a driveway of ice. Yeah. So that's done. And our temperatures are going to like really plunge over the next few days, probably going into a, a deep freeze. Ours too. <laughs> so, you know, but that goes on. That goes on. How is Lala Key? What's going on? It's been a week. Monday is um, Monday is the anniversary of my sister's accident, and so I'm I'm struggling. Yeah. We we are we are with you in spirit yeah. and in heart, and uh, I know you didn't have to be here, especially during this sort of time, but you chose to be here, and we appreciate your choice. Yeah, and that first year after losing a sibling is always the hardest. That first anniversary of their past. Yeah. Is- always the hardest um does it get better it gets better but it doesn't that emptiness still lingers absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. it's a uh, quite 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 it's something so before we go any further um uh, other than that what's been going on this week Oh, what's not been going on? <laughs> we are in a certain, you know, those carousels, those those little right, they go go round and round. That's what I feel like we're in. We're in we're in a carousel of just merry go round. Yeah. Oh my God! Well, it was like it's like that old Billy Preston song. Will it go round in circles? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the old Keith Sweat song, "Merry Go Round." And oh. <laughs> We're gonna talk I about Keith have a song Sweat. That I wrote about the merry-go-round. Keith around, so. Sweat. <laughs> yeah. Keith, did you? Did any of you ever see him in concert? No, he's not my favorite. I did in the eighties because I saw a New Jack Swing concert. What did you think? Okay, I like. <laughs> I, okay. I heard okay. So get ready, folks. This is gonna like be his, good. I like his. The music I love because I love New Jack Swing. Um, his face looks like clay, oh, no. like mud, like somebody just like slapped the pieces on my like Mr. Potato Head. But um, Keith Sweat can't sing. Let's Thank you. Oh, we get out. <laughs> if we're being honest, Keith Sweat can't sing. He can beg, he can oh, whine, shame. but he cannot sing. Teddy, look, Teddy Riley put him on good. Yes, he did. Didn't get I, I, I can't stand him, so I, I can't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I can't stand that whiny no <laughs> tune. He has, he has no. He can't carry a tune. I, and y'all was, just about your boy who was doing uh, auto tune, and he can sing. What's your boy's name? <laughs> yeah, T Pain. Uh, yeah, no, even auto tune. Please, baby, 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 please. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm glad because I agree. I, I said, like, he was one of the concerts 
that I walked out on. Well, I stayed. I said, this guy can't sing. A concert I did walk out on is um, Black Street. See, I like really? Black Street. I like Black I, uh, Street. It was... Uh... Which, which version of Black Street did you see? That's the... Ah. Mm, I, I didn't think... Because there's remember. the... Um, uh, what is his name? Um, God, his name escapes me. You'll remember. It's all but, right. Um, well, yeah, to out in the middle of everything else, she goes like, oh. I guess, "That's what's, what's going to happen. It's going to happen." Yeah, I, I, the David Keith Hollister. Sweat, Dave Hollister. Dave Hollister. Okay, that version. That's the first version. But after Dave Hollister left, um, he replaced him, and then you know. Yeah. No, the key sweat. I went. Uh, this guy. It's not the greatest singer. Mm -mm. But let's get to some other things before we get started. We banter around. So subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show, please. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit the notification button. Follow the Dr. Vibe Show on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn to advertise your business product or service on any of the platforms that I host or produce. Please email me dr. Period, v -I -B -E, at the dr. V -I -B -E -S -H -O -W dot com. Also want you to join the Pride Time Saturday. I didn't change it. Saturday it should be Saturday. I'll change it before we finish tonight. Saturday with ha la 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 Discord group. Please email me. Email me at dr. Period vibe at the dr. Vibe show dot com. Check out the Prime Time Saturday store. I'll make sure I put the links to it in your comment section wherever you're watching this. And also check out at Patreon where you can get exclusive content yeah we have, um, we have paid we have a paid patreon and we also have some content that's free so like you know the 10 and 10s if you're not in the discord group the 10 minutes is available for free if you want oh, to a full hour you have to um sign up for a membership excellent excellent actually i want to give a shout out today there is an organization in toronto called the walnut foundation and what they're all about is a group of black men who have organized it's a not-for-profit that addresses or really wants to make awareness of prostate cancer and prostate cancer is very prevalent higher prevalency in black men than non-black yes. men yes and they were having a clinic today at the Jamaican Canadian Association. I had interviewed the lead of that organization, Anthony Henry, a few weeks ago, and he wanted to know if I could come out and do it. So them in conjunction with Princess Margaret Hospital, which is one of the world-renowned hospitals mm -hmm. for cancer, conflicting or battling cancer in the world, had a great clinic, was a great time there. And, you know, people, okay, so I didn't. No, it's gone. But I did take my PSA test. I do it usually, but I even I said, you know, let me just do it. So a good gathering of black men, they're getting their PSA test. And the nice thing is they'd have to pay a cent. And even if they didn't have like they are targeted specifically for those black men that haven't had a PSA test done in a year and did not have a doctor, because if you don't have a doctor, there are some moments where you have to pay for a PSA test. Oh, yeah. Oh. Wow. And, and they were offering this for free of charge. So a shout out so to uh, to Anthony Henry and the Walnut Foundation. So yes. any other, let me just get some things, some people saying hello here. JJ Mars from Arizona. What is up? Oh, wow. Galen Bingham. Long time. Yeah, it's 13 degrees in St. Louis <laughs> currently. And actually, tonight there's a football game in Kansas City, and they're pretty. It's going to be the coldest NFL game played. And they're ever. further south than we are. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh, JJ Mar says Keith uh, whines, no singing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he sings about as well as Paul Abdul. They both have that nasal quality. We <laughs> <laughs> oh. our name in there too. That's oh. true. It's true. Oh. She's just sick of dancing. Oh, look at this. Cast Lou, blessed Saturday, sunrises and shared. Great shows and info. Thank you. And you, <laughs> I, I'm going to say something. I'll, I'll save it to after we finish offline. I just, I, I included something new <laughs> in the trailer. So I think that it's, it just goes in very timely with what you just said. Okay. <laughs> 
JJ Marr says in Colorado, minus two degrees here. Wow. So it's a cold in a lot of areas of the United States. Like uh, there's a National Football League game that was supposed to be in Buffalo tomorrow. They canceled it and reschedule it for Monday. You know what? Martin Luther King Day is on Monday, holiday. Yes. yes. It, we didn't. Yes, include that's, that. the actual, that's his actual birthday this year. Birthday. Mm -hmm. So before we get into our other topics, thoughts, ladies, on Martin Luther King and or his legacy, where does it stand today? Does it still resonate in the Black environment? It still resonates. It will be abused on Monday. I expect to see a lot of Republicans quoting King um, <laughs> very disingenuously. Um, meanwhile, you know, all Ron, context. Ron DeSantis especially quoting Martin Luther King. Meanwhile, he's trying to stop Black people from learning. So, <laughs> come on. Meanwhile, his state was banning King books. So he better not exactly. say anything because he will get dragged by Black Twitter. Hmm. But he doesn't care. But that's he the doesn't. point. He doesn't care. That's not he his agenda. No he friends. doesn't care. He has no Black friends. We didn't include we this. We don't to know he's got Black friends. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and the one Black friend Nikki Haley has is her son-in-law. Oh, gosh. You guys are already going in. and We haven't started. Really? I, I, Okay, well, uh, no, it's okay. I just wanted to ask you, we're, we're, we didn't put it as a conversation about the, isn't the Iowa caucus supposed to be on Monday too? Monday, yes. On the Martin Luther King holiday, they have the Iowa Republican caucus. Interesting. Well, it's usually like the third Monday of January. So regardless, it was as is the King day. And, um, you know, they you you would think they would have it earlier in the day since a lot of people have it off, but they have it at night. So, and it's supposed to be negative twenty two. Yes, they're oh. concerned about. Yeah, they're oh. they're concerned. Yeah, they're concerned about voter turnout. Oh yes, they are very very concerned about that big time. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, the appetizer. I don't like those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> You want to see plus 22, not minus 22, right? Right. Celsius. 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 Even Celsius is even better, right? Yeah. All right. All right. So let's get appetizers done. Actually, I think we should do, we just put the early part, just call it the appetizer. I think mm -hmm. that'd be, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you I know like what? That. Yeah. Which I'm just going to create a lower third, the appetizer. Yeah. There we go. Done. Yeah. We'll put it in. All right. Let's get to the main course. Start of the main course. First course, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin kept cancer diagnosis from the White House. I heard a lot about this, and I'm questioning why. Exactly. That's that's my point, too. I, I mean, I understand that he is Secretary of Defense, and we're engaged in some um, struggles right now that require our Secretary of Defense to be on point. Um, but this is a fallacy of not having a protocol that no no other um, administration had either. Um, I think that we need to give him some grace because finding out you have cancer, it's you know it, it's not like you got um, you know a new job, had a new baby, got a new car, and the first thing you go, hey, guess what? I got no. Right. Who goes out and says, hey, guess what? I got cancer. No one does that. And also too. Um, you can't really give a whole lot of information to people because the question would be, well, what's the prognosis? What's this? What's that? The first thing is you get tested. The second thing is they tell you, then you have to go back for more tests so that they can give you a prognosis. So, yeah. um, I don't see why, first of all, he had the surgery for it. He followed protocol. He get, he put the person, um, his deputy there, you know, in, in his place, was, he was going to be under general anesthesia. And at that point, for people to say that he kept the cancer diagnosis from the White House, just because the White House hasn't said anything, doesn't, doesn't mean, mean they that didn't know. Joe Biden mm -hmm. didn't know. And I would expect that if he did have give his powers to his deputy, that Joe Biden did know about that part. The other thing is that's separate from this is that he had complications from the surgery. That's what caused him to go in the hospital. And I can understand no one reaching out because if you're the person, and if you've ever been with anyone who's been in ICU, I've been there with my sister, that person is not capable of doing 
anything. They have to rely on the people who care about them, who are there to do it. And I'm sorry, but I don't think the first thing in his wife's mind when her husband diagnosed with cancer, had a complication from the surgery, and if he was in ICU, it was pretty dire, um, yeah. that she was first of all thinking, oh my God, I got to call Joe Biden. And he, you know, eventually they did call someone, but that person happened to be out with the flu. Now, we have to ask the question, did she tell him she was out with the flu? Because she might not have, and that's why the media didn't get it. The problem isn't so much that the um, the communication with the White House was off. People are using that as a red herring. The problem is that journalists are mad because they didn't get to get a scoop. One. Yes, yes, and yes. And two, Americans are so nosy, okay? People are mad that they didn't get to know all his business when he found out. Guess what? You're yeah, not they feel entitled. entitled. America feels entitled about everything. They need to know everything. And don't it's forget we've got, HIPAA. we've got HIPAA laws. Right. That govern privacy. No, forget that. You know, that doesn't exist. It <laughs> yeah. doesn't exist. So we don't know what they what what they knew. They're keeping that stuff close to the vest. And guess what? Maybe we shouldn't know. I don't want to know, but I also ad I admire the fact because the first thing that came out of my mouth was, oh my God, here comes the witch hunt. That yeah. was the exact words that I said. Um, I don't like the way that it was handled. It happened the way that it handled. And guess what? He came out and said he didn't like the way that it was handled either. Right. So you know what? It was on his, he knew, and it was on his heart. And he knew that he was like, listen, that didn't go the way it was supposed to be planned. And you know, sometimes it just happens that way. I don't, I don't, I feel like people are trying to make a big deal out of everything now. Uh, next thing you know, they're going to be calling for his impeachment or make him step down too, because that's what the GOP does. I don't you think know, so. they always want to call for somebody. Call for impeachment here. You know why? Because I think it was very strategic by the White House in the, the um, the, the Department of Defense in how they released the information about the cancer. Yeah. Because they did it the day before the Republican primary, because no <laughs> doubt that was going to come up in that primary as a question. And then when they said that, that's something they had to pivot away from, because guess what? You impeach a man that has cancer when yeah. every American, no matter what your party affiliation, has been touched by this disease in some way, some form or fashion, people are going to hate you. I want to yeah. believe that I, I, I feel like they're so corrupt right now that they just don't care. I, I, I know that. And I would want, I want to believe that so bad, but nothing that they do right now surprises me. If this was last year, if this had happened before, um, cause right now we're 10 months away from an election where they're all coming up for election. So because we're 10 months away, I think that if it had come out, if this had happened and it had come out that it happened like in December, they would have gone, they would have, they would have went gone after for the jugular. But I think that because they are, um, because they are running races, they also have to remember that they're, they don't, they don't speak to all the American people. They have to speak to their constituents. Yes. And that's a problem. That's a problem. Cancer is one of those diseases you just don't mess with. Yep, I agree. Because the thing is, is that that could loosen the house a lot faster than abortion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Remember, they only have a two-seat majority right now. Mm -hmm. Question. Right. Does, awesome, does Mr. Austin's race have anything to do with the battering about this? Of course it does. I think so, yes, definitely at first. But then when it came out that it was cancer, it was like, oh my gosh, okay, that's everybody. That That's not just something that happens to Black folks. That happens to everybody. And people yeah. have watched other people die from cancer. And if you've seen it, you know that's not... Mm -mm. I still can't get out of my head the last time I saw um, each of my uncles that died from cancer. It's 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 devastating to see someone have to go through that and suffer so much. I mean, they become a shell of themselves and mm -hmm. it's really hard to see that and to see how much pain that they are in. So I agree. It's 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 um, it's hell. Yeah, because people don't leave the way that they look, you know, that you remember right. them. It's everything is just 
they, they get the death look in their eyes, the death rattle in their voice. Uh, you know, they've lost all their hair and everything, eyebrows, everything. So they, they don't look and they lose a whole lot of weight. Everyone mm-hmm. in my family that's had it by the time they passed from it were at like 60 something pounds. Hmm. Like one of my uncles was six, four. So, 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 did Austin, so do you feel ethically, Mr. Austin, did you do something wrong? Well, like I said, the process failed that they had in place. They're going to have to update the process. And it's just like, put it this way. It's just like when um, Kennedy was killed, you know, Um, there's that process. But before that, when Lincoln was assassinated, there Mm -hmm. wasn't that process. Right. Of of the secret of the um, speaker of the house becoming, you know, the vice, you know, filling in as people moved up. So. Um, we don't know that we need those processes until they fail, until the communication fails. So Lala, you, you feel that race has a a part in all this. How about what, what lens do you feel race has to do with this? Oh, other than they hate us on everything, they hate us. On <laughs> oh God! Other than, they, other than they hate us, okay. We can't. We can't be great. They. We can't do anything right. We're not allowed. They're trying to take everything from us. So anytime that they could call a race card, and and then try not to say that it's a race card, they do. I. I I'm tired. I, I'm tired of this battle. We should not be here. Um. The 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 world is moved beyond, not to say that everybody has, but to be honest, traveling a lot recently, I've noticed that this is not that much of a big deal around the world. People look at you funny sometimes like, what do you mean? You know, because they don't get it. But America thrives in it and it thrives in it every single day. So no matter how great we are, no matter how many times we've gone over and beyond four times what they have to, they are going to do something to try to bring us down. We're not. And we will talk later about another situation about that. So I think this is a clear cut case. And I'm with Aisha. Once they found out it was cancer, then they're like, oh, I can't touch it. But right. if it was anything else, you better yeah. bet heads would have rolled. And, you know, they're good at telling us slavery was slavery was. Uh, 200 some odd years ago, um, get over it. We've been here for 400 years. How about you get over it first? Exactly. Mm. And, and and that's honestly, well, I do. I feel it. I feel it plays. I play. It plays a big part in absolutely everything that we do. And think about it. They have. They are. They have a plan to take down the most powerful black people in the country. In higher education, they took down the president of Harvard. They want to take down Kamala Harris. That's why they put out all these bots and things that have Democrats all up in arms and like, oh, Kamala is not doing a good whatever, whining about that, going to shoot themselves in the foot. And then he is the most powerful man in the military. He is the Secretary of Defense of the United States, okay? He's the most powerful man in the military, and he happens to be Black. And if anyone knows anything about the legacy of Black people in the military, the first black people early on in the military had to go through some real difficult stuff. Even the first person at West Point, when no one would talk to him, they would freeze him out. He wasn't allowed to join any of the clubs or anything. You know, the, it, it's the same when we started going to colleges outside of HBCUs. It is yeah. the same everywhere. And here we are in 2023, and we are still having to do firsts after being here for years, still having to do first and getting resistance because people, Nancy Mace talked about white privilege this week with the Hunter Biden thing, which she has no, no definition of it because if she knew it, the definition of white privilege is expecting that positions of power that are held by black people belong to you. When you, when you Aisha had- and I are on the same page, I'm gonna tell you something, I already wrote that down in my book. <laughs> Wrote it down in my book. Expecting that those positions belong to you. I have to, when people say, oh, this black woman took my job. Um, Did you apply for it? Did you have the credentials for it? No, but I could have been considered for it. Why? Well, I could have been, I could have been. How and why? How and why? Right. 
Woo! <laughs> Do you have a PhD? <laughs> okay, I think we've got a look at this. So J.J. Marsh says Black American soldiers were far more patriotic and loyal than whites in the military. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. J.J. Marsh. You ain't got no fight on me from that one. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. We are on a, on a fire start, so let's go to our next conversation piece. Well, before we get started oh, on that. Okay. <laughs> before we get started, my fire alarm is beeping. Okay. So we're gonna let you go, For and hopefully second. we'll be back. You'll be back in a second. All right. So we're gonna. <laughs> I think that's pretty important, don't you? Yeah. I. You know. We. We. You know. I say no. Stay. Burn your house down, but stay. You know. Come on now. No. I, we don't roll like that. Let's go. Okay. Heather Harris says we can't ra ra rationalize other people's fantasies. Yeah. Great conversation. Good evening. Good evening. Excuse me, Heather Harris, who uh, many a time is uh, watching The Morning Vibe, which I co-host and co-produce with Ryan only at night on Monday and Friday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Just going to clear my throat. So I'm going to put myself on mute for a second. Some cooties have been going around. You got cooties? Yeah, the cooties. You got the cooties. All right. <laughs> I, I think. All right. The, the, the house is still standing. And oh, yes. The house is still standing. Um, just we were cooking um, dinner um, one night. Ah! And things got a little smoky. Uh, <laughs> things got a little smoky in my oven, and um, uh, the fire alarm uh, had gone off. And we tried. We were trying to get it off, and um, I think the battery might have died. So. <laughs> It started beeping randomly. Do you still have dinner though? Do you still <laughs> That's the question. Yes. Uh, yeah, we had we had dinner. Um, you know, like sometimes something will spill at the bottom of the oven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Fitness IQ Cam says, Ginger, I have some in the fridge. I have some. Yes, I keep ginger. I keep ginger. I keep I'm gonna ginger. have I'm gonna have some boiled ginger after this epic conversation. Thank you, fitness. Ginger and IQ. lemon. Ginger and lemon. Mm -hmm. I've got lemons on the table. I've got ginger on the table. Fitness like you can. Nice. Otherwise known as K S F E Y L R W F Q. Thank you so much. All right. And the best way Let's to get, get the to juices our... out the ginger is to grate it. Yes. yes. Actually, yes. I, I just recently brought a grater that actually Did you? Bottom. No, well, no, it's I have always had one, but I had a grater, but it has a tray at the bottom. So when you shred, it just goes right <sighs> into the tray. So don't you just love the simple things like that? Oh, you know, it's nice to have simple things once yeah. in a while. Yeah, you think know, it's it's fun yeah. in games until you grate your fingers. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> which I which I did when I was about 10. Ouch. I grated Ouch. my fingers, you know, the potato peeler. I peel I peeled off a layer of skin off my thumb. Oh, you know, what? These, these are yeah. all the young. Like you know, all the young antics, like crashed into a um, park truck on my bike, cut my my um, knuckles. So I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know that your middle name was Daredevil. I still, have, <laughs> I still have this car. I've I've used to climb trees, and I've fallen like out of a probably about fifteen to twenty what? feet from the tree. Um, mm -hmm. Landed on my cousin. <laughs> Because we we, oh both fell, we both fell out the tree together, because um, we were play, we were, we used to climb trees, sit up there, play and talk, and we were like pretend wrestling. Both oh, of us fell. Okay. I sprained both ankles. She sprained one ankle, and I sprained also sprained a wrist. Um, still had to do ballet though. Oh. On my on my um, sprained ankles. Ouch! Oh wow! On my well, ankles, I broke the tailbone. Being a time boy, I was up in them trees too. <laughs> yeah, look, I've look, I've jumped up, I've jumped off of things when my sister, my youngest sister, she told me she could fly. Jumped off the um, <laughs> yeah. jumped off the uh, okay. countertop. I, I, I told her fly. go ahead and fly, and she <laughs> twisted her mouth because she hit the tub. So yeah, we were rough. Okay, and I passed it on down to my kid because. Every day she's going to put a scraped up knee. <laughs> well, 
Staggers, aka Daredevil. All right, let's continue on. <laughs> that was an interesting little turn. See what happens when you put your place on fire. We find out more about you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's let's go. Next up, Hunter Biden makes a surprise appearance at Contempt. Oh, I love it. I just <laughs> loved when he strode himself right up in there. That was some Dude, beautiful TV. No, the no, no, best part was when he left. <laughs> The best part was when he left, because as soon as Marjorie Taylor Greene started talking, he got up and left. And guess what? All the press left with him. So she did her little two minutes of TV, right? Like she wanted, which was so Oh, she wanted to say things so bad. You know, like when she said, yeah, you must be scared of me or something like that. Ain't nobody scared of you three toes. Right. Not one person. You look like a Neanderthal. Ain't nobody scared of you. I was like squealing. I was like, I'm so glad you walked in. I mean, because you know what? It's about time that he d- dishes something back at them because honestly, th- this is, like I said, this is nothing but a witch hunt. The man has never held office. Um, you know, listen, my, my brothers, my two brothers um, struggled so hard with addiction. As and the brother. fact that this man is walking around clean right now is something to be celebrated. And yet you want to continue to trash this man at every cost you have. They make up stuff and it's a tit for tat thing. See, they want so bad to get him, but they doesn't say not one word about Trump's kids and marriages and all that stuff. Not one. We has some YouTube videos with white dust on his nose. Come on. Yes. Yes. Yet they still after going after this man. I, I'm done with it because the government, the government is not functioning and it's to our detriment. We are getting close to a shutdown again and you're still trying to hunt Hunter Biden. Come on now, I'm done. And what's so bad is that they kicked, they extended the um, gap to February 6th just so they can continue these, this sh- yes. these charades. Yes, yes. It's it's really quite we we're not we're not functioning. There's nothing working in the United States. Nothing. No. What we need congressional hearings about is the very thing. One of the one of our conversation topics about those 15 states that um, turned down aid to um, help childhood hunger. That needs uh-huh. that needs a hearing. Those governors need to come and testify. As opposed, to Hunter Biden. Look, the other thing too that got me. Uh, Josh Moskowitz, um, he was there and he said, you know what? After Nancy May said she voted to, to for in contempt charges, whatever, whatever. Well, anybody of you on the other side, he said, you know what? I'll vote for contempt charges right along with you. But you all have to agree to uh, a contempt vote for Jim Jordan. Yes. Perry, who, by the way, Scott Perry, um, he was in the room. <laughs> he was one of those there. Um, Representative Big, who was also there. Um, so it, it, it's, it, is, it is peak white privilege what they did, Nancy Mace, just so you know. Because Nancy Mace mm-hmm. said, it is the epitome of white privilege that you came in here and said, no, it's not. No, it's not. It is the epitome of calling your bluff. He was yes, there. Exactly. You had the opportunity. They and they y'all didn't know what to do with it. Y'all yeah, had no idea because said, actually someone said, right. somebody, I can't remember who said he was the, a Democrat. He said it was Dan said, Goldman. He said, "Who's ready to vote?" Right. Now? Ask some questions. Ask some questions. They didn't have no questions. They all said that they didn't want to, and the reason they don't want to is because what they did. What they wanted to do was to get him in, because remember the last time that they, they had people in an open hearing, which was which was his business partner, they didn't get what they wanted and it blew up in their faces. So what they want to do is go have a private deposition because they know that once it comes out, their people aren't going to read it. They want to be able right. to go on Fox News, go on Newsmax, 
go on all these other conservative places and be able to say, well, we got definitive proof of this and that. And it'll be a daggone lie. Yeah, everything is a lie. Okay, just want that we have some comments here. Uh, Regina's in the house. Regina says, Hunter is the ultimate red herring. Yeah. And then yeah. Heather Harris yeah. on Facebook is saying, Dr. Melissa Harris Perry calls, might call these stories weapons of mass destruction. She says, correction, correct, might call these weapons of mass destruction, she says. Yeah, and you know what's so bad? They still have not connected any of the Hunter Biden stuff to Joe Biden. They're, 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 um, the math isn't mathing because they're like, well, Hunter Biden, he got money from these foreign governments and all. And when his father, when he had to pay his father back, that's how he paid him back. Guess what? Guess what? Joe Biden didn't take knowingly take money from foreign governments. No, he did not. He took a payback of a loan he gave to his son and a payback from his brother. They can't even prove that his brother was getting money from from um, these things. And for them to say, too, this is also one of those weapons of mass distraction. They say that Hunter Biden had a job he was not qualified for. Hunter Biden, right. went, did you all know that <coughs> Biden went to Harvard? Did you all know that he was an attorney? He was clearly <laughs> qualified for whatever it was he was doing with Ukraine. They're not going to let it go. I, I, like, I, like I said, they're going to stick to this story. I was yesterday years <clears throat> old when I found out that Hunter Biden went to Harvard and was a lawyer. I just want to correct, Heather. I, I said weapons. I hope I said mass distraction. I may have said destruction, but I want to say weapons of mass distraction. So well, it is mass correct. destruction of the truth. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Call it like you see it. You see it. You didn't have no blurb. That wasn't a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> Thank nope, you. That was subconscious. Thank you for the autocorrect. I love that. I've got my own autocorrect, and I got my own on uh, my own AI. I love. Look, I got HI. I don't got AI. I got HI. I love it. I love it. The, so the it sounds like the Republicans are not going to let this go until they find something. There's nothing to find. Because There's here's nothing the to find. It doesn't matter if they find it or not. They are still going to do this vote. Does, they're, they're trying to, to, to look like they're doing all the procedural stuff correctly, but they're going to vote on impeachment regardless. Just like they're do, trying to impeach Mayorkas. They, yes. that, that hearing was going on at the same time as the one that Hunter Biden was at. Yes. I watched a bit of that. And the, quest, the questions that they kept asking was, the Mayorkas was like, well... Um, that's not my job. That's not my job. Um, did you do this and this and this? He's like, um, no, I didn't do it directly. I didn't do it. That's so and so did that. And it's, he was just like, no, I didn't. You know, they they were they were this close to blaming him for Abbott and DeSantis sending migrants to other states. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then he would answer like they would throw all these stupid questions out that is not a yes and no answer. Yet they wanted a yes and no answer. And so he he did answer one. And then it was a witch hunt. No, you shut up. You didn't. You, you already said it. So I'm claiming my time, claiming my time, claiming my time. Oh, God, yes. And he thought they were going to blow up. I mean, their their faces turned red. They just it's ridiculous. They can't they can't function. Because it's going to be a hard, it's look, it's going to be a harder route to impeachment for him than it is for Joe Biden. The thing for Joe Biden, they're going to make that up. It's going to be very specious. They're going to do it because it's what Donald Trump wants. So when he runs, he can say, "Well, I, he was he was um, impeached too. He was impeached That's right. too." That's what all I he wants you. to say. For Ted. You did this to he's me, a, so I could do it to you. He's this a third grader. He he's a third grader. Yep. You know. I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, right. but what am I? Stop borrowing from Pee Wee Herman. You know what, Aisha? <laughs> did you read my notebook before we started? Because I got that written down, too. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like minds, great minds think alike. <laughs> Pee Wee, the late Pee Wee Herman. Oh, my gosh. I know you are, but what am I? Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Can't oh you tell God. we're all 80s 
kids. Oh, oh my oh, man. goodness. Oh, <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So from Keith Sweat to Paula Abdul to oh. Pee Wee Herman. Yes. <laughs> the 80s rule. Dare I say that's quite, dare I say that's quite a threesome, but let's go on. to <laughs> So, so absolutely. So, so this, this Hunter Biden thing, they're going to, uh, is it, are the Republicans going to be dragging it through all through doing election yes. season? I don't yes. think so. I think they're going to try. No, and get, I, think so. I think they're going to try and get the vote um, before the end of the primaries. Because remember, primaries end in May, I believe, in some states. That's too far. <laughs> I think. Yeah, it's too far. But they're going to they're going to make it make it so that when it's time for the general election, Joe Biden can go into it. I mean, Donald Trump can go into it saying that Joe Biden was impeached too. They're trying to give because remember he doesn't have a platform. There's no platform. There's nothing they're going to do on healthcare. There's nothing they're going to do to lower inflation. Nothing they're going to do to continue to lower gas prices. Nothing they're going to do to um, increase minimum wage in this in the different states. There's nothing that they are going to do. They don't have a platform. Their platform is grievance. So the, if Donald Trump has another thing that he can complain about that people haven't heard already, because right now he sounds like a broken record. They're going to make sure it happens. I hope Aisha's right, because I honestly think we're going to hear about this for the rest of the year. Well, I think they were going to hear about it for the rest of the year, but I think that they're going to have the vote done, and then they're going to go out as surrogates <laughs> for Donald Trump, and they're going to be able to say, well, Joe Biden's been impeached. Mm. So he doesn't, des he do he, if, if he doesn't deserve the presidency, then Trump doesn't. And they're probably going to get, and I think the reason that they're going to get to it even faster is because, remember, the Supreme Court Oh, yes. February 8th is going to rule or hear the case anyway as to whether or not Trump should be kicked off the ballots in Colorado yes. and in the other states. <laughs> and so and so they're going to do it before that because they want Donald Trump to be go, to go, be able to go in there and say, well, Donald, well, Joe Biden's been impeached, too. So why isn't he off the ballot? Right. Even right. though we know the reason he's off the ballot is because of the insurrection. But remember, the insurrection is tied to his second impeachment. Yes. So rather than saying, oh, because I did insurrection, no, that's not why. It's going to be because I was impeached. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, from where I said, whether he, whether he, uh, <clears throat> whatever 45 does, if you disagree with it, you know where, where it's going, Supreme Court. Oh, yeah. Always going yeah. to court because guess what? He, it's always going to court. Because his long game is to run out the clock. He will continue to litigate things. He he has been litigious ever since the seventies in New York. He's been, he's been litigious since he's come out the womb. <laughs> right, he has been in court ever since he took over business. He started running businesses. He has been in court every year, every year, and. You know, I mean, dude, we still haven't gotten your tax returns. Are they still under audit after 30 years? <laughs> Come on now. There, there's that. And then the other thing, too, is that with, with all these court cases, he is going to then campaign on getting money that people think it's going to help him. Exactly. Exactly. And, it is, you know, I mean, his lawyer literally said this week that he could shoot some, he could shoot his political rivals. Yeah. He could kill his well, I mean, he's rivals. always he said saying things court. like that. He said it in court. That's, that was his immunity. That's, me that's messy. Defense. That was his I, immunity. I just, I, I want to throw up. I mean, I just really do. And it, it just makes me sick to my stomach. I, I don't understand how we are still here when it's so very clear. Everything is clear. Had this been anyone else, had it been a regular citizen or a regular businessman, they would have already been right, been already been under the jail. Okay. Um, why this man is getting where he is now, I I I, I want to understand. I do understand, but at some point you think y'all can't be that stupid, can you? But they are. If any one of us incited violence, we would be sitting in jail until our trials. He yep. incited violence. Five people died. A number of 
Capitol Police committed suicide afterwards. People are permanently disabled as a result of it. He's still calling for violence. Yes. He is free. Put it this way. His his lawyer argued that he could go and shoot his political rival. One of his political rivals is president. There you go. Any one of us say that we could kill a president. Secret Service is at our door. Before we can even blink an eye. Before we'd even be off this podcast. Yes. Wow. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. All right. Let's continue on with our next conversation piece. Formerly expelled Tennessee House lawmaker says he's been stripped from committee committee assignment. I did not know about this till both of you ladies brought up in our chat this afternoon. What is going on with this story? Well, for one, they've wanted them out from the very beginning because you see the three, the Tennessee three, all stand for what the people have voted them in for. It is against absolutely everything that that GOP wants down there. So they are not only a thorn in their side, they're, they've got a whole full-fledged vampire stake in their side because they're calling them out. They're letting the public know. They're vocal about it. They're, they're, and not only that, they lost in the fact, GOP lost in the fact that you know they expelled them and they got right back in there again. The people have spoken, but still yet they're trying to do whatever they can to silence their voices. So where do you get them? You get them in the committees. You get them on little technicalities so that you can do your dirty deeds. And then right, possibly you maybe out. you'll get back in. It's all a time thing. They want to vote these things before they can get him back on these committees before the public outcry comes. That's, yeah. It's a plot and it's a ploy. And you got to remember, state legislative yeah. sessions are very short. They start in January, and most of them are over by June. So they've got a very short window. Some places, like Maryland has a 90-day legislative session for their state legislature. So you've got a lot of work to do in a very little bit, very little amount of time. Um, they kicked him off of the education committee because yeah. he objected to the voucher system that they want to put in place. Now, remember one, Tennessee is the home of the Klan. That is where they were founded, okay? Yes. So all these people have that dirt under their nails that are in that um, in that chamber. But the voucher system, here, here's the problem. We wouldn't need school vouchers if people invested more money into public schools, the way that they, what the voucher system allows for, and it's probably an unjust voucher system, because here's the thing, you're going to give people the money, you're going to let the money follow the kid so they can go to private school, but it's not going to be in, do you know, Tennessee does not have a large amount of money per pupil, which is very low. It's very low. And that amount would follow the kid, but then the parents would have to pay the rest, which would be a you know, a couple tens of thousands of dollars. So what does that mean? Who has that, that laying around? That poor, right. That means that poor kids, black kids, Latino kids in that environment will not be able to get out of the underfunded, understaffed, overcrowded schools. This, Which is their agenda. That's what they want agenda. anyway. It is their agenda because the yes. next step, and I believe Florida is on this path too, because the next step is to privatize education. Yeah, education for profit. Now, what else does this remind you of? How about the prisons for profit? How's that working for us? It's yeah, the and same just so thing. you know, it's the, same, it's the same thing. We have no constitutional right to an education. Just mm-hmm. so, Just in case you didn't know that. The school, I was today, buildings, years old. the school buildings have to be um, um, open. The, it's a, the facility itself has to be has to not discriminate, but you don't have a constitutional right for an education. So if they decide to privatize education throughout the state of Tennessee, what does that mean? Here's the other here's the caveat to that. You don't have a right to a public education, but but every state has a compulsory attendance law. 
So if your kid does not go to school and you cannot afford to send your kid to a private school, you will go to jail as a parent. Compulsory attendance. Oh, Aisha. Oh, I, I <laughs> well, I think on that one, <laughs> I, think I wasn't even ready for that. I did not know that. I, I did not know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you, because the other thing too is that um, homeschool, you can homeschool, you know, but what, what happens with parents, the, the option they'll be giving you is that either your kid can go to private school or you can homeschool. Well, I can't afford to. Well, who, not there work. you go. What? Oh, but there. But I bet you, with the homeschooling, that money that will not follow the child, because if it no. did, then a parent could homeschool and use that as their salary. But no, no. So, wow. so compulsory attendance would mean that parents would go to jail. And guess what? Guess what that does? A whole lot of there are a lot of politicians that um, invest in for pro prison for profit. So they need to fill them up Same somehow. Playbook. Same right. playbook. Okay. You see how that's working. Oh boy. All right. Well, look, we're going to take a break on primetime Saturday with Aisha and Lala. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about food insecurity in the United States and states who are voting not to provide food to U.S. citizens. Really? Children. Yes, yes children. children. So we're going to be back in 90 seconds. Keep it locked on Primetime Saturday with Aisha and Lala. <laughs> you know, and, and that's what I feel like. You feel like you're the Harry Tubman of the mind. I am. I feel like I'm the Harry, I, I, I'm one of the Harry Tubmans of intelligent black people. Like, I want to liberate y'all from, like, being left behind and ignored <laughs> and, and oblivious. No, really, the yeah. rappers get all the attention. You know, seriously, does anybody else feel this way? Like, like ignorant black people, they'll be all up, you know, getting all the headlines on the shade room. Overly sexualized black over, folks. Over, like the, the, the twerkers and the, you know, just just people that, you know, don't always represent the best of us. You know, the diversity. You know, like people like Dr. Vibe. Like, everybody should know about people like Dr. Vibe. Dr. Really Vibe, is, he's trying to do good work for, for black people. Dr. Vibe from Toronto. Good to see you, my brother. Uh, Dr. Vibe. Everybody follow Dr. Vibe. He has a great great show he's very good at what he does and i have a lot of respect for him okay so let me um hop into this what's up dr vibe how you doing everybody if you see dr vibe in the chat everybody go follow the dr vibe show dr vibe is a real smart brother and a, a, a good human being and i like the guy a lot and, and he's very intelligent and uh i think everyone should pay attention to what he's got going on we got to shine the spotlight on the intelligent black people out here that are really doing the good work uh don't just pay attention to the rappers and the celebrities you know a lot of these people are losers your true winners are your people in your community that are really having your back, uh, you know, helping us to have stronger families and a stronger community. So Dr. Vibe is in that category. So you might see the Dr. Vibe show in this chat. If you see him, please go follow him. OK. All right. So anyway. What is up, Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins is always and I actually had a conversation yesterday with uh, Dr. Boyce and he said, love what Aisha and Lala are doing. Happy, happy to have them on board with y'all. So we appreciate that. And also cannot forget Dr. Alicia also. So we're on primetime Saturday and we are back. And this is a really, dis well, oh, a lot of these stories are really disturbing, but this one I'm shaking my head at 15 <laughs> states shut out food aid for 8 million children in the United States. What's going on with that? Well, we oh, have this is coming from the people who claim that they, you know, they love children, but they're fiscally conservative. Um, we've got 50 states in this country. 35 have accepted the supplemental food aid for 8 million children who are living in poverty. Well, not more than 8 million children, but for children who are living in poverty. But mostly what this will do will eat will will give um, additional funding so that the kids can get meals over the summer when they're out of school and can't get, because remember a lot of kids, a lot of kids get their only two meals of the day from school, breakfast and lunch. So it, it, it all it is, is an additional like $40 per child, you know, per month right? for the summer. Um, and 15 states, as you can guess, they are 
the lower half, the southern states, and then those states right around uh, North Dakota, I, up through Idaho, Montana, all those states said no. No. Now, here's the thing. Now, mind you, though, I will I will interject. Sorry, Aisha, didn't mm -hmm. mean to interrupt because I did a little bit of research on this as, my, as well. At first, they were reporting that all 15 of these states was all GOP led. That's not true. There is one state, Louisiana, rejected it, and that is Democratic. Right. And they likely rejected it because their state legislature voted to turn it down. Right. And which is not Democratic. So this is a program that's already been paid for. It was already included in the last budget, okay? The budget agreement that they did already included in that budget. It's not money that we will have to pay for later down the road and no. raise taxes or anything. It's already paid for. So that money will just sit there. The federal government will just sit there. And kids will go all for a point. Well, these children are going to starve. All for political upheaval, ridiculousness, and, and for people who claim that they, you know, want babies. You know, you're going to have these babies. We're going to feed them, though. That is exactly how they work. This is such a nasty thing that they're doing. And and to be honest, guys, it's not always just. Our black and brown babies. There are a lot of, of of Caucasian families as well that will qualify for this program. Working class people because because That's we're the majority. That's yeah. the majority. Let's be very clear. The families yeah. who get food stamps, SNAP benefits, there are more white families getting it than black and brown families. Yeah. Why is that? Which is the part they don't want to talk about. Why is that? Because numerically. White people outnumber these communities of color in the United States. And so they are, and, and it's their own constituencies. That's the part that really kills me. You talk about the ne South, I never understand South that. Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, um, Louisiana, um, all those states that said no, in Texas, all those states that said no. What about your poor rural white kids? And they it's still the same reason I don't understand. People. And they still every time. These people. That's right. And and we've always said that in Kentucky, like, you know, you have all you've got all this going on, the poorest of the poor in the Appalachian Mountains, and they vote for VA, VA, uh, GOP every single time. I do not understand their mentality. Kentucky took it. Yeah, they did. Okay. They did. You notice now, that. If, if, if Cameron had won. Yeah, would yeah exactly. He would not have taken it. Nope. It, it, you gotta, it, it's, the, again, it goes back to that saying, the cruelty is the point. So yes. you're going to get revenge on parents through the kids. The kids cannot control what the salaries are in the home. <laughs> Won't even provide food for children now. No, wow. mm -mm. and and don't don't get it wrong now. Hey, this is they've been aiming at WIC forever, mm -hmm. and th and this is tied into getting rid of WIC. Period. Yeah, because the first step to doing this was they had gotten um, they had cut the um, extended SNAP benefits from COVID. Some of this mm -hmm. money is still left over from COVID. Yes. Huh? No, I'm serious. No, yeah. no. Some of this money for these things is still left over from COVID. And they're saying no. Why? Because they can't admit that their their um leader, their little leader, as Jasmine Crockett called him, um I know it. I love this got up the COVID response. I mean, <laughs> oh, here's another thing. Donald Trump let one million people die on his watch because he couldn't admit that he failed at something. When's he going to face trial for that? Never. Because I'm be starting to feel very that. discouraged about everything. I mean, he just gets away with everything. I'm so sick of it. Yeah. But let eight, let eight million children starve, right? Wow. And then complain about these kids when they start doing crime. 
Yeah. How are they supposed to want to stay in school? And, and you know, over the summertime, if you you keep certain kids out of crime in the summertime by feeding them. That's right. They, they Something cannot, as simple as that. If they cannot simple get fed, people will steal food. And the stores are already complaining about the thefts. Yes, they are. And shutting down in the rural areas. That is shutting the down the poor areas. I mean, just exactly. And and this this uh, this is a side story. Sorry, now it's going to have me thinking about something. There's a coffee mm -hmm. shop in in Kentucky that, and I won't say the name, but it I they were priding themselves on being a local coffee shop that was an alternative to the big conglomerate. And they stood with Black Lives Matter, and they stood with equality, and they stood with the rainbow. But yet. They refuse to open a store in the neighborhoods that they claim that they stand with. Instead, they'll put these stores in different areas. This is exactly what is happening. You know, they, they, well, we'll get down there and we may get robbed or we blah, blah, blah. But, but this is the thing. You can't double, double talk. You can't talk out of both sides of your necks. Either you are or you aren't. But that's what everything is now, talking out the side of your necks. Yep. We have and the a lot GOP of is really good at that. We have in cities and in rural areas, one thing that suburbs don't have are food deserts, okay? And they're called food deserts because there's no place where people can get the food that they need. There's no place where they can get healthy foods or anything. Um, mm. You, it, it, it is, it's sad because like, in the, do you know who's providing food in rural areas many times? Walmart. There's, wow. You have those rural, you have those rural communities. They might not have a grocery store, but they'll have a Walmart. That's where they go to get everything, and they'll have nothing else. One stoplight. That's it. You in the inner cities, you're lucky if you have a corner store. But to get to a grocery store, you can buy fresh fruits and vegetables to keep your family healthy. No, and if there is a grocery store, nine times out of ten, they don't have fresh produce. No, they don't have. And to be honest, they have sub subpar meat. Let's not just talk about yeah. the fresh. If, if, they sell, if they sell meat at all, sometimes at all. all they have are freezer items yes. and non processed foods. You know, this this is interesting. I'm just going to interject from what I think three of the biggest challenges in North America, because Canada has a food insecurity, growing food, food insecurity challenge. But I think the th three of the biggest challenges, immigration food insecurity and home insecurity yes yeah home insecurity yes. is not being talked about but it's a big big challenge and, and let's be real okay if our democracy fails these things will get a hundred times worse oh well, yes it's, it, it's aisha it's aisha it's interesting you mentioned about the the food and all that i have a long time friend who's worked at a grocery store that I shop at all the time and I uh, went in there the other day and wanted this is before I, I really cut down my protein like chicken meat consumption and he's there was some there was some I think it was some chicken or beef that was on sale he says don't buy that and I go why oh it's it's grade b yeah meat from I'm not gonna say what country he said he said it from a country I said okay so the food aid, food security is a growing, growing and challenge yes. yeah, in, North, in North America. And I've not, a, I think it's a global challenge. I think, I don't think it's just a North American oh, thing. Is. I have a feeling that if we went to, uh, we were in a different, no, we visit a number of countries, we'd find that there's, there's a growing, growing food and home insecurity, but this food aid shut out for 8 million children. Wow. Yeah. It is disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if you live in any of those states, if you live in any of those states, it's time to mobilize. Call your people, and have them just send a standard email to their governor. Flood their flood their email yes. boxes. Flood their what, email what, boxes. what are the reasons? And also, if they're up for election, get them out. Here's my question: What are the reasoning for the opponents of this? What is their it reasoning? Co it costs too much. It's too expensive, but it's already paid yeah. for. But it's paid for. It's not fiscally responsible. We have to cut the deficit. 
here's the thing. When there's money earmarked for a specific thing in the government, you cannot use it for anything else. That is the right. Rule. That is the law. So if the money is for food aid for children. Children. Let's repeat that again. Right. Children. Children. They can't take that money and um, apply it to the deficit. So the argument is very, very disingenuous. It's the Jedi mind trick. That's what <laughs> they do. They, they oh, we're going to be doing this. And the next thing everybody believes it because they don't do their research. When Aisha just clearly stated exactly what the truth is, they will never, they'll never admit to the truth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I think we have a good segue into our next conversation topic because I know that one of Lala's favorite Jedi's is a gentleman named Elon Musk. And yeah. <laughs> you, you set this next one up wonderfully, Aisha, Aisha and Lala. This, Lala just did a beautiful, Elon Musk seems to endorse tweets saying that students at black colleges have low IQs. I went to an HBCU. My sisters both went to HBCUs. My um, husband went to an HBCU. Let me tell you. My closest friends all went to HBCUs. I'm going to tell you something. HBCUs graduate the most black PH, black students that go on to earn PhDs than any other kind of college in this country. Okay. You know why? He, he's Guess what? Saying that Elon doesn't reduce their enrollment. It's nope. only going to increase their enrollment and that's a good thing. Why? Because that means more money to HBCUs. But he's so, let me tell you, let me tell you something. He's so dumb that if you were to close the biggest land grant institutions, because a lot of the HBCUs that are state schools are mm -hmm. land grant institutions, which means they bring federal money to the state. Mm -hmm. okay? They bring federal money to the state. They bring additional tax revenues to the state because students go there. They're mostly in the South. Do you know how quickly the South will dry up if you take away funding to those land grant institutions? So what he's saying is ridiculous. He's saying it to pick on people. And that's, all he, that's all he's good at is to pick on people. He's right. good for nothing but, else. But let's remember this, America. Our distinguished vice president, who was also a senator from California, who was also the attorney general for the state of California, went to Howard University sure and did. HBCU. Okay. But that's also a direct stab at her because you know he can't stand her. But listen here, um, dude, maybe you ought to get your cars in check before you start talking about somebody else. You all this stemmed from so basically he also the, said that Martin Luther King, whose birthday's Monday has a low IQ because Martin Luther King yeah. went to my house. Yes. Okay. Exactly. I, I'm actually going to read a little bit from the story. So, cause people say he did, what did he say? So the story here is Elon Musk seems to have to endorse tweets saying students at black colleges have low IQs. The world's richest man shares some of his thoughts about race on X. Com. Elon Musk endorsed a treat Tuesday suggests, that suggested graduates from historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, have IQs approaching, quote, borderline in tech intellectual impairment, unquote. This isn't the first time that the billionaire celebrated blatant bigotry on his platform in recent months. In November, Musk promoted a tweet that said, Jews push, quote, hatred against whites, unquote. So, this example deals with the United Airlines program announced in 2021 that gives students at three HBCUs the opportunity to interview with the company's career development program for pilots. On X, a platform formerly known as Twitter, a popular user called at Eyes Lasho went online to argue that United, the United program is dangerous because graduates from these co colleges are unintelligent and therefore unfit to fly a plane. Quote, the mean, the mean IQ of grads from those two United Airlines HBU partners is about 85 to 90 based on SATs at those schools. The SAT correlates reasonably well with IQ. At Eyes, Eyes Lasso wrote, quote, HBCU, quote, HBCU IQ averages are within 10 points of the threshold of what be considered, quote, 
borderline intellectual impairment. The user went on to compare those numbers with typical IQ stores that claim to have dug deep for to, to have dug up U.S. Air Force pilots and commercial airline pilots. So, I mean, yeah. Oh, well, I'll just and I'll just let me finish here. So, quote, it, it will take an airplane crashing and killing hundreds of people for them to change this crazy policy of D.I. D.I.I. D.I.E. must responded. Rearrange the letters of the acronym. Uh, for diversity and inclusion initiatives, which encourage partici participation of Black people, women, and other historically underrepresented groups in the workplace. So he has issues with DEI. That's the whole problem. But he here's the other yeah. thing. Here's the other thing too. Um, you would never know if a Black person went to an HBCU unless they tell you. Nope. Nobody wears their or, unless they wear a shirt or whatever. Unless they, you know, um. I'm going to warn you right now, if your dentist went to Vanderbilt any time in the 2000s, oh. they, got their, they got their training at Meharry Medical College, which is an HBCU, even though, even if they're white, because that Vanderbilt doesn't have a dental program. So they had to do a cross registration with Meharry to get that. They started mm -hmm. when I, the year, my last year at Fisk, because Meharry Medical College right across the street from Fisk, and a lot of students went there. But here's the other thing, too. When I was at Fisk, do you know the majority of the students in the graduate physics program were Indian immigrants? And you find that a lot at HBCUs, too. Yes. And then what about the white kids that go to places like Harvard and Yale and choose to do a semester at HBCUs, because that happens often too. What are you saying about their IQs? Or what What about the IQs of um, the white students who go to HBCUs? And in some t in some cases, they can get they can earn a lower GPA than the black yes. students get their yes. more to in. So Elon Musk doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. As usual. And my thing is this. If you don't know anything about HBCUs, close your mouth. Because here's the history of HBCUs. And I wish I could have said this last week when our troll was saying, well, Spell Spellman was started by a pale, was, you know, funded by a pale woman. Here's the thing. Every HBCU, unless, but there, there are a few that came after, but the majority of them started out, started out at Reconstruction as normal schools to help the formerly enslaved learn how to read or write because in slavery, they could not re read or write. This was to help them to be able to get ahead. Well, if people who were enslaved couldn't read or write and enslaved, meaning they were not earning wages, how are they supposed to fund these schools themselves? But, but once they were able to, they did. Fisk University mm -hmm. stands. We had Jubilee Hall because the Fisk University singers toured the country to raise money mm -hmm. for that building mm -hmm. on campus. For that building on campus. Okay? So let's be very, very clear here. Elon Musk does not know the history nor does he feel like he needs to be educated on it. He just doesn't, he talks out of a hole in his body, but it's not this one. Exactly. And <laughs> not only does he sound stupid, he looks like he's the one with the low IQ. Because all he, he did, did was, re, was re quote a tweet that of someone else who didn't know what they were talking about. Nope. And I'm but see, now all of his cronies, not the once again, you have these groupies. Anybody who has money automatically gets put on a pedestal. So whatever he says goes. Um, and how insecure are you when someone can't even unfollow you on your own platform? If right. they don't agree with you, you're just going to force it down their throats. I, I'm not on the platform. I mean, I just don't go on there anymore. Uh, but I know toward the end there, every time I open my app, the very first thing you would see is him and whatever he said it was always something sickening or a yeah. lie or something that was completely racist yeah Thurgood Marshall went to an HBCU 
Hazel O'Leary, mm. who worked in the Clinton administration, went to an HBCU and then eventually became president of one after she was president of Fisk for a while. So you would be, he would be, he would be very surprised about all these people who actually went to HBCUs. And so I'm going to be checking to see if Elon Musk says anything about Martin Luther King on Monday. And then mm. I will go on t- Twitter and I will re-quote tweet it. And I will say, but you know, he went to an HBCU, right? Mm. He, All right. He's already your- got his finger on the trigger though, Aisha. I'm pretty sure he's ready. Oh, he, he might be ready and he might ban me from it. I don't care. But the other thing too is that he cannot dispute that fact. He cannot no. argue that fact. That is a fact. All right. Heather Harris catching up on comments saying, Howard in the house, PhD. So My Heather sister a, too. Yes, but PhD that, from yep, Howard. She's and, undergrad in her undergrad in her and PhD at Howard. My dad's a graduate of Howard. There you go. Positivehire.co. Thank you. Happy New Year. Michelle Hayward's in the house. Michelle also says college and libraries come from black people. Yep. She also mm-hmm. mentions Hillman College. Yes. Also, uh, there was a whole TV show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. A whole TV show. Hillman based on Hampton. Let's be clear. Yeah. Yes. And or white students who roll and roll exactly. at HBCUs. So and see, that's, that's the fallacy is that they the right has spread this lie that white students can't attend HBCUs. That's right. not true. If you've ever That's gone to one, if you've ever gone to one, you've seen several white people at HBCUs. Now, the one thing I don't appreciate is the regentrification that is going on, well, the gentrification that's going on in downtown DC, right smack in the middle of Howard's campus. Oh, they yes. A path for just regular residents to walk through the campus. And I'm sorry, yes. that to me, you would never. They look, Yale is built around the city, but you right. don't see people in the city strolling through the um the the um the old campus downtown. Yeah. You know, and, and we were just there in um uh, August, yeah, and checked mm-hmm. that out. I mean it was it's it, it's so disrespectful. And, and what people don't realize is there there is sacred ground on our campuses. Okay. Yes. Our Greeks have their own property on the campus that belongs just to them. There are other places on campus that like, for example, if any white person walked across, across white person, black person who wasn't a graduate for 25 years or more or 50 years, walked across the oval at Fisk, you're gonna have some problems because that right there is for the golden and silver sons and daughters. People who have been wow. out because that used to be slave ground. That's how we honor our ancestors. So some of these pieces of land, you know, have special significance. Yes. To us. And to just be able to just walk through it like nothing and not and not even take in the history of it to me is ridiculous. Oh, but remember, we benefited from slavery. <laughs> Oh, Ron DeSantis. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to really get him elected across the country. He's going to win all the black votes. <laughs> well, depending how he does on Monday, he, we by we by our next broadcast, he may have dropped out. Oh, I hope so with his old horse mouth. Okay. Man can't smile or laugh for nothing. I mean, he oh my God, like he was on it. Morning Joe. Yeah, was it yesterday? Yes, he was on Morning Joe yesterday or Thursday morning, and um, they were like uh. We have Ron DeSantis here, and Ron DeSantis sat there like he doesn't like know hurt, how like to, smile. to smile. He's like, like it hurt him to smile. So Regina says Elon is sounding and looking more and more like Steve Bannon. You mean Steve O'Clannon? Oh, <laughs> wow! On point. Regina says, I had many students choosing HBCUs over Ivy League schools. They were yes. accepted at both. And that happens That happens quite often because you know what? Here's the thing about HBCUs. And it's, some, and it's the one thing that they can't stand. It's a place where we can go and feel comfortable. Yes. I was lucky to have that three years there 
where I didn't have to experience the kind of racism on campus that I experienced undergrad. It was a safe community. Like you had your popularity, con your regular stuff, but the race issue was not there. I sat in no. classes with people who looked like me. I got to study things about people who look like me. Yes. You know, it was encouraged, you know? So I just, um, I got to intern at the Race Relations Institute at Fisk University under Dr. Wimbush, who Dr. Vibe knows. Um, that's how I ended up with him as my thesis advisor. And wow. So, and so, um, you know, these are things that, you just don't get when you go to a predominantly white institution. If white kids can go to University of North Dakota and feel safe, how come our kids can't? Right. And don't forget, there are also there are also predominantly Native American colleges in North Carolina, and in and in the Plains areas. There are also predominantly Hispanic grant institutions, oh. as well. I I, so, I, I got to jump in here now. Yes. Uh, Aisha, you have more knowledge of this probably than myself. I don't know about Lala, but funding for HBCUs, mm -hmm. where yeah. where does the majority of it come from? Student tuitions, which most of these students are going into debt, taking out loans to pay right. for. Yes. Um, the, the ones that are land grant institutions do get funding from the federal government, not as much as they should compared to the other land grant institutions that are not HBCUs. Um, so this is they, where, go ahead. And they do get funding from different um, grantors. Mm -hmm. um, but the challenge, again, is getting money from donors. We don't have big dollar donors as exactly. we should because, because, we're, because the students end up being in so much debt. Yep. But there, yeah. were, there were some big people who were giving money. Like Oprah gives money to Tennessee State University because she's an alum. Um, you know, Bill Cosby and Camille Cosby. Yep. Used to give money to HBCUs. They gave, they, yeah. they had at one point gave him give gave money to Fisk to build a dorm with their name on it. Of course, I think they've taken the name down. But there are there are some people who are you know Spike Lee gives to Morehouse. So there are some people that do it, but not enough. Right. Well, I guess uh, this is what I'm, and you mentioned one of the funding sources. If there's a change in the administration next election, how much impact will that have on federal funds to HBCUs, in your opinion? Well, you know, Donald Trump likes to brag that he got all this money for HBCUs. No, he, <laughs> promised, he promised it. He invited the presidents there to say that he was going to do it for a photo op. But every last one it's of those like the big Bible scene, every last one of those presidents has said that no they didn't get the money they were promised they got more yeah. and, and here here's the thing for any any of these black people out here who have issues with barack obama hbcus actually got the most under barack obama joe biden has upped that ante so yeah so if you want money to go to hbcus you need a democrat vote appropriately all right Let's get to our last conversation piece, something I did not know of until the ladies brought it to my attention. Regina King stars as Shirley Chisholm in Netflix Shirley trailer. I had yes. no idea. Actually, I was I love I was, that we're ending on a we're ending on good notes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was, I, was yeah. Actually, I had a conversation with Heather Harris, who's I think she's still watching this live. And I mentioned this to her. She goes, Oh, I'm a huge Shirley Chisholm and I'm a huge Regina King fan. She had such a big smile when I shared this. So who wants to talk about this? Sounds like it's going to be a very, you know, very oh. epic. I uh, saw the trailer epic. and yeah. it is oh powerful. God. It is so it powerful. It really Re is. Regina King looks just like her. Got the mo got the mannerisms down. Um, if she does not win an Oscar or an Emmy for this or a Golden Globe for it, there's no justice <laughs> in the arts, in the theater arts, because um, first of all, Shirley Chisholm. Chisholm I'm so glad that she's getting a um, a film. Yes, me first too. Of, and people forget she was the first, the first black and woman to run as president for a major political party. 
And it's such a powerful story. It's so powerful. So, I mean, you know, if you ever, if you ever get a chance, there's also a documentary called Shirley Chisholm Unbossed and Unbought or Unbothered. Yes. Oh, my God. That is so good. You have, have to watch that. You See that. You must watch that before yeah. the movie comes out. Yes, it is an excellent, it's excellent, excellent. And if, if you remember Kamala Harris, when she was running her own presidential campaign, took the um, colors, borrowed the colors from what Shirley Chisholm had done for her presidential campaign. So watch the trailer. Regina King is fabulous. I, you know, we've been watching oh. Regina King since she was little and she was on um, 227. Yes. And the way that she has matured into her acting, into her craft, no, there is there is nobody like her. Um, just, you know, there are very few child actors and actresses that grow up and, and are able to still work as adults, but she still works as an adult, but She's got quality. With quality. With, quality. I mean, quality. with every film, every TV show, she gets better and better and better. And it just, I mean, I can't say enough about that trailer. Make sure you watch it. The film comes out. Isn't March she a producer on Netflix. this one too, though, Aisha? Yes, she is. Thought, yes, she's a producer on this. Mm-hmm. Yes. She she got Not the money to get it done. Get it done. So, um, March 22nd is when it comes out on Netflix. Make sure you watch it. Yeah. It's going to be good. I'm excited. I'm really excited for that. And I'm glad it's coming on Netflix too. Yeah. Go. All right. Well, something to look forward to. Thank you as always, ladies. As always, another epic conversation has come to an end. Some uh, additional comments we have. Regina says this, HBCUs are safe havens. A lot of Black students do not feel comfortable at primarily mm -hmm. white colleges for many good reasons. Also says, even at prep school in New Hampshire, ex ex Exeter created a, uh, a Black dorm because those students did not feel comfortable, safe in the white dorms. It's ironic, too, because I actually had a conversation this week with a, a professor from Lane College. Oh, wow. Is it in Jackson? I don't remember the name of the city, but Lane College. It's an HBCU, so nothing just happens. Yeah, nothing and I'll tell you, happens. when I was an undergrad, mm -hmm. I was the only Black student in one dorm I was in in my um, junior year. Wow. wow. All right. All right. It was, All it was right. not pleasant. And I'll tell ah. you something. I'll tell you something else. The white boys felt no shame coming to knock on my door at night. Oh boy. Let's not go there right now. Regina says unbought and unbossed. Um, yes. That <laughs> That's the Shirley yeah. Chisholm documentary. Make sure you watch it. There you go. Thank you, Regina. Thank you so much. Well, as always, family, we would like to thank Aisha and Lala for taking the time to drop knowledge bombs and share with us. So first things first. La La, the social media maven. How can people get in contact with you? Well, you can find me on all social media platforms, unless you're on Twitter, at Living the La La Life. <laughs> like I said, unless you're on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm choosing peace this year. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find my account on Instagram. You might not find me, but you can always find me on our Discord channel. Wonderful. Fantastic. And if you want to get in contact with myself, website, the DRVI. No, yes, it is the DRVIBESHOW.com, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, the D, the Dr. Vibe Show. That's the space DR period space vibe space show. Instagram at the DRVIBESHOW and X at the at uh, just at dr v i b e s h o w. So, as always, before we close down, let me just do a few other things. You can also watch replays of this epic conversation on the Dr. Vibe Show YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and also the website the dr v i b e s h o w dot com. And as always, I've put it in your comment section, but we're just going to do a few other things. Uh, subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube. 
hit the subscribe and hit the notification button. Also, you can follow the Dr. Vibe show on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And again, if you want to advertise your business product or service on any of the platforms that I host, please email me dr period v i b e at the dr v i b e s h o w dot com. Here's the link for the Patreon Prime Time Saturday with Ish and Lala. Here's the link for the store. And I think that's it for now. I don't think we got anything else. And also, the information about the store and the Patreon is in the comment section wherever you're watching this live or on the replay. So let's finish off with this. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions and aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Remember to give yourselves grace and don't just manage your time, manage your energy. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you're spreading the word. Hit that notification button. Go to our Discord group. Join our Discord group. Join, join the Patreon group. Watch all the stuff we're putting out. It is I'm not the one saying it. Other people are saying it. It is outstanding. God bless. Peace to all. Keep the faith and walk good.